With the election coming up, a president's agenda can be a natural surge in the support of certain industries and the stocks in those industries. Regardless of your political values, as an investor, it's mindful to see where your money might flow to with whatever administration that takes charge over the next four years. Even though whoever wins doesn't fundamentally change anything the instant they win, the optimism surrounding support for further government funding for a specific sector will often be enough to increase the entire industry's stock market valuation. Many Canadian stocks have US or global business, so depending on the company, some may partake in the market surge from the next president's agenda. We'll start with the top Canadian stocks a Trump administration might support. With Trump's administration, there are four industries that I can think of that will receive support from his agenda. The first industry is defense. The Trump administration, or Republicans in general, typically like pouring money into the military to take care of its veterans and to invest in the army to build more assets and advance its technologies. When Trump took reins back in 2016, military spending had revitalized and started increasing again, while the years under Obama had in fact decreased. To tap into the military trend in Canada, my top stock idea is CAE. They're one of the country's highest quality companies that offers software training solutions to the aviation, defense, and healthcare industries. The defense and security segment of the company will likely see support as more government spending adds value to the industry through new long-term contracts. CAE is $4.2 billion in market size and its defense revenues are $1.3 billion. That represents 40% of its total revenues. They also have $4.5 billion in backlog defense business. Of their total revenues, 40% is based in the US. Some notable contracts that they won in 2019 include training services for the US Air Force, US Navy, and Royal New Zealand Air Force. The next industry is oil and gas. The Trump administration has been pretty vocal about supporting the fossil fuel industry because of its contribution to jobs and the economy. Particularly with transport and delivery of Canadian oil and gas to the US, the Canadian energy industry needs more regulatory support down south for it to get a free stock market boost. A Trump presidency will likely keep the entire North American economy optimistic for oil and gas related companies. From an oil standpoint, my go-to Canadian pick would be the XCG ETF, which represents a basket of the largest Canadian energy and pipeline companies. The ETF portfolio has 505 million under management, and inside you can get a broad range of exploration, refineries, pipelines, and integrated companies of the largest market sizes. The next industry is healthcare and pharmaceuticals. The Trump administration believes that flexible private insurance and competition should be the fair way of course for the industry to fix issues inherently wrong like surprise medical bills and expensive insurance premiums. Republicans tend to believe that the free market can address a lot of the issues in the healthcare system. And when you leave the market actors free to do what they do, then they'll drive innovation and get the consumer more choices and options. Essentially, less government involvement and less regulation will let the industry solve itself. In the near term, this might keep prices high in the industry until the market can naturally address the issues of affordability, accessibility, and competitors looking to slash costs of healthcare products and services. But compare that to direct regulation and dismantling of high prices that a Biden administration might do to make healthcare affordable for everyone, it would be at a smaller loss to companies. Democrats, including Biden, tend to believe that access to healthcare is a basic human right, and the government has a role to play to ensure that people have access to that right, regardless or not if they're legal citizens. From an investment standpoint, the companies in the industry would likely prefer to have the reins on pricing with their own hands through Trump, with higher pricing drug and medical related companies will benefit. In Canada, my top stock idea would be Bausch Health. They develop, manufacture, and market a range of pharmaceutical, medical device, and over-the-counter products, primarily in the therapeutic areas of eye health, gastroenterology, and dermatology. Bausch Health is $6.1 billion in market size, and revenues are $8.6 billion. 45% of the revenues are pharmaceutical sales, and 60% of the revenues are based in the U.S. The last Trump industry is space exploration. For years, the US has been on the forefront of space exploration, but it's been a long time since landing on the moon that exploration has been taken seriously. Particularly, privatization and acceleration of space exploration has been the trend with Jeff Bezos Blue Origin and Elon Musk SpaceX. There have been more initiatives around making space travel a normal form of transportation and to let humans become a multi-planet species. Trump has even taken steps to create the Space Force to help support the industry. His administration is planning to spend $2 billion in new funding over the next five years to create it. In Canada, Maxar Technologies would be the ideal Canadian stock that has exposure to space exploration. The company is a leading provider of solutions in Earth intelligence and space infrastructure, and it can be further defined as providers of data analytics solutions and satellite imagery communications. Maxar is $1.7 billion in market size, and revenues are also $1.7 billion. Their operating segments can be broken down almost equally by data analytics, data generation, and space infrastructure. Some notable clients that they're in business with include a number of governments, 
and the large corporations like Google and Uber. Now let's talk about what top Canadian stocks a Biden administration might support. Within Biden's administration, there are five industries that I can think of that will receive support from his agenda. The first theme is renewable energy. One of the bigger criticisms of the Trump administration has been the US's exit of the Paris Accord, which sets out the global framework to avoid dangerous climate change by limiting global warming. Trump's opinion on the accord is that Washington entered into an agreement that disadvantaged the US to the exclusive benefit of other countries, leaving American workers and taxpayers to absorb the cost in terms of lost jobs, lower wages, shuttered factories, and vastly diminished economic production. Biden's administration, if elected, plans to recommit to the Paris Accord and ensure the US achieves a 100% clean energy economy and reaches net zero emissions no later than 2050. The Green Movement will support companies moving toward clean energy, as well as those creating renewable sources. In Canada, my top stock idea would be Brookfield Renewable Partners. They're a globally diversified, multi-technology owner and operator of renewable power assets such as those in hydro, wind, and solar. The company is $9.8 billion in market size and revenues from its operations are around $925 million, which represents 30% of the total. When breaking down by energy source, a majority is hydro, followed by wind and solar. The next theme is Central America. According to Biden, Trump has insulted America's neighboring country and demonized its migrants. Activities with the wall and border entry issues for migrants has made collaboration more difficult for the two countries. Biden's plan for Central America is to improve relations by developing a comprehensive four-year, $4 billion regional strategy to address factors driving migration, mobilizing private investment in the region, improving security and rule of law, addressing corruption, and prioritizing poverty reduction and economic development. Overall, better collaborative policies and more lenient opening of southern borders would improve the Latin American economy. Scotiabank would be one of Canada's most exposed companies to the South American economy, so financial improvement down south should result in further use of banking and capital market services. Scotiabank is currently $51.5 billion in size, and its Latin American exposure is roughly $9.8 billion in revenues, which represents 40% of its total revenues. According to the company, Scotiabank is a top three bank based on market share in Chile and Peru, and they're the only global bank present in all Pacific Alliance countries, which include Mexico, Chile, Peru, and Colombia. The next theme is China. Like what Biden would likely do with improving trade relations with Latin America, the same could likely occur with China in terms of opening doors to make fair trade deals and repairing severed business relationships. In the past few years, Trump has placed strict trade policies against other countries like China, who have over the years been taking advantage of the American economy. This has resulted in an America-first approach to deals that has become detrimental to both companies combined in terms of economic growth. Having a more open doors approach with China will likely improve the Asian economy's economic growth. In Canada, there are two companies that can hop on the growth in China. The first idea is Canada Goose. They design, manufacture, and sell performance luxury apparel in Canada, US, Asia, Europe, and internationally. The next leg of growth for the luxury brand has always been to leverage their Canadian prestige to expand throughout Asia. The lessening of trade war tensions with China would give Canada Goose a green light to ramp up their aggressions with new store openings and expansions. The company is $3.8 billion in market size and their Asia revenues is $153 million, which represents 20% of its total revenues and growth of 80% over the last year, primarily from expansions in China. The other China growth idea is Manulife. The company provides financial advice, insurance, wealth, and asset management solutions for individuals, groups, and institutions in Asia, Canada, United States, and internationally. Manulife is $27.5 billion in size, and with a relatively mature and stagnant business in North America, all the growth over the last few years for the life insurance company has basically come from Asia. Right now, of its three primary geographies of operations, its Asia revenues is the most at $21.6 billion, which represents 36% of the total. Any resurgence in optimism with Asia and improvements in the general Asian economies and living standards should be a good sign for Manulife. The next theme is U.S. residential rental properties. An item on Biden's agenda includes making housing affordable to the lower and middle class population of America. Biden says that housing costs should take up no more than 30% of income so that people have money left over to meet other needs. His administration's plan is to invest $640 billion over the next decade so that Americans have access to housing through forms such as tax credits, easier funding for first-time home purchases, rehabilitation of older homes, and construction of new homes. The ideal Canadian stock to tap into American housing would be Morgard North American Residential REIT. They're a residential REIT that focuses on the acquisition of high-quality multi-suite residential properties in Canada and the U.S. The company is $445 million in size. They have 60% of their 13,000 total suites in the U.S., collecting $1,425 in average monthly rent, and tolling an occupancy level of 94%. The last Biden theme is media. 
There are a couple of news platforms like CNN, New York Times, and ABC that have been explicitly called out by Trump for producing false news or having reporters that are hostile and either fabricating news or asking questions that elicit skeptical responses. Can you give us a question? Don't be You're rude. Attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you no, give I'm us a question? Give you a qu- I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You st- can you stay categorical? You are fake news. Sir. Although nothing really changes instantly, a Biden victory would probably give confidence to the specific media companies that have been targeted in the past by Trump and getting viewership back over time. Although nothing fundamentally changes, this would probably push out the valuations for the entire industry due to revived optimism for these platforms that have been targeted in the past and have gotten their valuations discounted. In Canada, my go-to news and media stock idea is Thomson Reuters. They provide news and business information services to professionals around the world. The company is $41.4 billion in size. The Reuters news and global print segments combined generate $1.3 billion in revenues, which represents 23% of the total. The U.S. revenues for these two segments combined would represent 15% of total revenues. So that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications for more stock ideas in the future. Let me know in the comments below which Canadian stock idea you think is most promising.